that last part stays, the down regulation and serotonin receptors stays, but your brain is plastic and it can overcome and it will overcome. So be hopeful. <music>
When the dopamine escalates, you believe in the future, you have that motivation and that confidence. Mm -hmm. So when the dopamine downregulates, the receptor downregulates in the brain, you don't respond to that dopamine as well. You're less willing to take that uncertain big payoff. And additionally, because the dopamine is being trans, uh, trans so what happens with the, what's the dopamine transport? The dopamine transport is taking the dopamine out of the brain. Mm -hmm. So when the dopamine transport is upregulated, what happens is you have less dopamine in your brain also. Hmm. Now, which in rats, in mice, has caused them to be less addicted to cocaine. So when they really? take androgenic anabolic steroids, when they take testosterone in high doses, the mouse is less uh, interested in cocaine because the dopamine keeps leaving his brain. Mm. So it, there's no point, it's just keep going out. Um, now the serotonin effect on the mice seems to be that when the serotonin is down, the receptor is downregulated, the mice, this seems to be the reason that the mice are more dominant and less, um, less submissive and more like uh, confrontational or violent. So for example, interesting thing, when they give mice uh, high doses, by the way, all of this that I'm talking about is in doses that are equivalent to what humans would take. So imagine like 600, 700 milligrams of testosterone a week, uh, even in the Petri dish one. The one I'm talking about that causes neuronal death in the Petri dish is at levels that would correspond to what humans take. So, uh, so what happens with mice with the serotonin is this. If the mice are given um, um, testosterone in adulthood, they exhibit this dominance characteristic and the violence and that stuff like that. When the testosterone is removed within a couple of weeks, they become submissive again and normal. However, the mice that are given the testosterone in adolescence before they reach uh, maturation, they remain dominant even when the testosterone is removed from them. There's a permanent change. And an interesting thing also, which is a danger now of taking anabolic steroids when you're younger. Another, another interesting thing is this, um, the serotonin, there are, so the, those mice that adapt and become submissive or playful again and not violent, the interesting thing about them is their serotonin receptors never recover. So they remain downregulated. But what happens is they change their behavior through plasticity. The brain changes its behavior, but the receptors themselves are still downregulated. So, so this is what uh, academics were postulating. So this is quite interesting because it means that, that there are some, he was asking about permanence, mm -hmm. there are some permanent effects on the serotonin receptor. Um, I'm not sure of the permanence of the dopamine receptor, I'm not sure it's been studied, but the serotonin receptor definitely there's a permanent effect. And there's another, now in humans what they've studied is this. They put humans on, uh, that are on anabolic steroids uh, in cognitive tests, they find that they consistently across many studies do poorly. Now, they, some studies they do poorly in a variety of things, but there's one thing they always do more poorly at. It's visual spatial memory, remembering things in space. Really? They always do worse on it while they're on the hormones. I'm not talking about when they go off. Mm. Now, in terms of when they go off, now this is an interesting thing. When they're on the hormones, now remember, most of the androgen receptors are concentrated or the most dense concentration of androgen receptors are in the uh, amygdala, mm -hmm. that basal part of the brain that we don't like to be too active. Now, I'll tell you guys something you may not know about cognitive psychology. What we find is that people who have anxiety sim symptoms, people who have um, a lot of rumination, uh, a lot of anxiety, not able to calm down well, they tend to have the amygdala is disconnected from other parts of the brain in communication. Okay. If you look in a fMRI scan, you find that the, there's not much activity going between the two, right? So interesting thing about the uh, adult steroid users that they had their brain scans, is that their amygdala is not connected well to their default mode network. The default mode network is the network of your brain that happens when you uh, think throughout the day. It's your stream of consciousness. So, you know, when we meditate mm -hmm. and we have these thoughts coming into our head, that's the default mode network. We're trying to recognize those thoughts and not engage with them. That's us trying to uh, take that default mode network out of dominance over the brain. But these people that are on testosterone or under, uh, anabolic androgenic steroids in general, they find that they are um, uh, they have a disconnect from the amygdala, the primal part of the brain, to the intelligent default mode network, which is throughout many areas of the brain. Now, this disconnect goes away when they go off hormones. So this is fine. The problem is that there is also a disconnect between the... Uh, the uh, DAN, the attention network, and several other parts of the brain. That, that disconnect remains there after they stop using hormones. So they have a problem with attention, with regulating executive functions after they stop using hormones. Permanent. This one appears permanent, wow. as much as it's been studied. So there are permanent changes to the brain. Now, an interesting thing is, 
the, the effects of testosterone in mice, I have to go back to mice for a second, the effects of testosterone on, on, um, on brain health of mice, which is negative, which has a negative effect, it, it, it happens, so it happens at medium and high doses of testosterone, but it happens at all doses of uh, nortestosterone, DECA. Okay. Uh, DECA, DECA at all doses is neurotoxic to them. Now, we talk about neurotoxicity in, in vitro before, but I didn't talk about neurotoxicity in mice. We don't have the data on humans. I, I've never seen it. Maybe I, when I do my blog post, I'll, I'll research if anything's happened in the last couple of years. But um, in mice, uh, there is a neurotoxic effect for testosterone when it's at a medium or a high dose, but not a low dose. And interestingly, if you, come, if you add an aromatase in, inhibitor, which is the thing that stops testosterone from converting into estrogen, it is neurotoxic at all doses for the it's testosterone, neuro- yes. Wow. Actually, uh, sorry, I made a mistake. It, just like in, in vitro, it, the testosterone is neuroprotective at the low dose, insignificant at the medium dose, and neurotoxic at the high dose. Mm. And the nortestosterone, the DECA is neurotoxic across all. I said, by mistake, I said that it's neurotoxic in the middle. But the interesting thing is, when you add the aromatase inhibitor like aromacin or arimidex and their, and their testosterone is not able to be converted to estrogen, the testosterone is now toxic at all doses also. Wow. So this is shocking because what this, what this leads to people realizing is that the conversion of testosterone, the, the neurotoxicity of testosterone is modulated by its conversion to estrogen. The estrogen, of course, as you guys know, you may know, estrogen is neuroprotective. Mm-hmm. So one of the reasons that people think that people, women get Alzheimer's more than men is the fact that they have a protective estrogen throughout their life on their brain and suddenly in menopause it's gone. So it can't protect the brain from the damage that's occurring from the amyloid plaque and so on. So estrogen, as you guys, you guys should know, is neuroprotective. But uh, when, you, when you add that aromatase inhibitor, the testosterone then becomes neurotoxic. But the nortestosterone is neurotoxic throughout and the effect is not changed when you add the, arom- the uh, okay. aromatase inhibitor. In fact, I believe the study that I'm thinking about also tested stanoz- stanozolol and stanozolol was also neurotoxic across all doses. So let's summarize. Uh, I mean, of course, the blog post will be detailed and it will be the best review on this subject. I believe that there hasn't been a good review and I'm motivated to make a good one. Um, but just to synopsize from what I remember, um, Think of it this way, testosterone is better for the brain than all studied, all other studied androgenic anabolics. Actually, I should mention, Anadrol 50, I remember, has a particular effect on MAOA, monoamine oxidase A. Okay. But we'll get into that in the blog post. So all the, you know, the, 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 the other hormones seem to have very different effects, right? Um, the most, the, the best effects that are, are gotten are by testosterone without an aromatase inhibitor. The worst effects are from uh, nortestosterone and the other, te- the other testosterone derivatives, the other anabolic steroids. And by the way, this ma- it makes complete sense. If you look at anybody that's on DECA, nortestosterone, they, I mean, I can think of so many people, I wish that we were talking amongst friends so I could say who the people I think are that are well known, but they act like so weird, their personality is so weird. I mean, you know one guy that I know that his personality is really weird, but uh, some famous bodybuilders and powerlifters, their personality is very weird. They're very like emotional. They're never like completely, they're always anxious a bit. They're, and, and you see these people are usually not the ones taking high dose testosterone. The ones taking high dose testosterone, they may be dominant, they may be a bit emotional, but they're consistent. Mm -hmm. Those other guys are inconsistent. They have like, you feel like they're lacking their serotonin and they are indeed. So, but anyway, the point is, testosterone is less uh, detrimental than the other drugs. Testosterone at high doses is neurotoxic. The long-term effects of using anabolic hormone, anabolic steroids, is a disconnect in your brain from the amygdala to the the um, default mode network and from the, the uh, DAN, the attention network, to other parts of your brain. That last part stays. The down regulation and serotonin receptors stays, but your brain is plastic and it can overcome and it will overcome. So be hopeful. Of course, you can do things to help your brain overcome these things if, if you've been in that situation before, as I do personally, because I, I used uh, anabolic hormones for a long time. Uh, well, not a long time, but like, uh, you, you know, pretty consistently. And I definitely had effects on my brain uh, from that. So thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you for this great question. And look forward to that blog post I'm going to make, which will be a very thorough review. Have a great day. Bye.